President Clinton was in a similar political tight spot in 1994, like Bill mentioned, 95 as well. When his party suffered big midterm losses, he had to reach out to Republicans. CBS News political analyst John Dickerson is in our Washington bureau this morning to talk about the former president's unusual support and if it can actually help the current president. John, good morning to you. Good morning, Chris. Uh, let me get your thoughts. A fascinating scene playing out yesterday. President Obama, President Clinton, both in the briefing room. President Obama leaves. President Clinton is left behind. Your thoughts? Yeah, well, you imagine if the cleaning crew didn't have to come in that he'd still be there talking. It was clear that uh, President Clinton was quite comfortable. Um, it was a hastily arranged press conference. that the, They were scrambling to find reporters to bring them into the room. Um, but this was the kind of theater that it needs to be uh, go forward here for, the, for President Obama. He needs to make the case. And Bill Clinton is quite popular and quite good at selling this kind of thing. And so uh, it was extraordinary because presidents don't usually do these kind of tag team things. And also remember the personal history during the primaries, that bitter fight between Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. Bill Clinton got in the middle of that. And there was a period where he was uh, persona non grata, to use a cliche, yeah. uh, in the Obama camp and in Democratic circles. Can he draw on some of the experience, like Bill had mentioned in his piece from back in 94, 95, do you think, President Obama? He well, he can, although um, the situation is a little bit different. The economy is uh, in quite bad shape. It was in better shape for Clinton. And also that Barack Obama doesn't have exactly the same kind of public skills that Bill Clinton had. But certainly in terms of putting himself between two parties, we saw uh, President Obama do that this week on Monday night when he announced the deal and Tuesday at his news conference saying, look, we've got ideologues on both sides. I'm the one in the middle. And that is a version of what Bill Clinton did in the mid-90s. Let's get back to that press conference for a second, because like I said, it wasn't just a fascinating scene. Now, President Clinton comes out and says, this is a good bill. John, let me ask you this. Does the message somehow get undermined by all the headlines that are out there today of, you know, deja vu, Bubba's back, uh, the front of the Washington Post, the front of the New York Times, where it, it looks like Bill is on the, the, the big stage once again? Well, I, it, maybe that's a bit of a diversion, but I think the message that also comes across is here's a po popular former president who uh, served when it was a time where the economy was good, who learned to work with the opposite party, and he thinks this is an okay deal. This deal is actually quite popular if you look at the Gallup poll. Yep. Uh, Americans, by huge margins, like the two main pillars of it. So I think it adds to the White House's notion that, look, you know, adults are on board with this. This is a sensible plan. Let's move forward. Well, let me ask you this now. With President Clinton's support, does this bill move forward, the framework, President Obama's framework? Will it ultimately pass, do you think? It looks like it's moving forward in the Senate. The White House believes that basically a lot of Democrats had to get sort of their anger out, anger about the way the process worked. The president put this deal together with Republicans and also anger about the specifics in it. The Senate looks a heck of a lot better than the House. They've added some little things to it that might improve this. And so it does seem like it's moving forward. The big, pro the big thing that's helping the White House is if nothing gets done, taxes go up for everybody. All right. John Dickerson, thanks so much. Good to talk with you this morning, John. Thanks, Chris.